Hello, you just got yourself a Behringer UFO 202 and you've either plugged it in and it's not working properly or you don't want to get stuck, so you want to find out how to work it. Stay tuned, I'll give you the answer. Step-by-step -step instructions will get you up and running and show you what it can and can't do. I'm going to try and keep this one short, but sweet. There we go. Now, this is a UFO 202, and it's a very useful piece of kit, but it does a few things you don't expect it to, and it does a few things that you would expect it to, but not the way you'd expect it. I'm a little bit irritated by this, because you can see here, they stuck a label over the front of the box, the pretty bit. The back of the box is all right, but the front isn't. So, you know, I can't show you the lovely picture, but it is actually a good quality one. Okay, in there you've got your manuals and the sort of information sheet, and nothing else in there except for the silver box, which is attached to the lead. It's very much like the other one, the UCA 222, which is um, only for line level. This is actually slightly different. This is for phono, as in plugging in your record players in, and also plugging in your cassettes and being able to digitalise them. So we'll go on that basis and we'll see where we go. You get the standard warning sheet, which says don't plug it in when it's switched on. And then you get the three instruction booklets, English, Japanese and Chinese. The instruction books have pictures in them, but there is a couple of problems. They don't tell you the whole truth and they don't tell you what it can and can't do. So now we'll have a look around it, but uh, later on I'll show you how to connect it up and uh, you actually use it. So stay tuned. This is it. It's rather nice and neat. It looks clean. It's got nice sort of metallic silvery stuff it's the same size again as a cassette a slightly chunky cassette in fact it's exactly the same form factor as the other machine that they do if you want to call it a machine the uca 222 or the 202 which is only for line level this is for phono and you can see here it says on there line phono input it's got an earth tag on it and it's got four rca sockets on it and those are used for input and output and they're quite important really. You see also on there there's headphones and the volume control. So now I'm going to show you how to connect it up. And for this I'm using my laptop, an HP laptop. And all you got to do is switch it on, get it to boot. Now I know I said about not connecting things up whilst it's switched on, but that doesn't, that doesn't include the USB because obviously USB needs to be plugged in while the thing's on so that it can be detected. So that's what we're going to do. Having got up onto the home screen or whatever you want to call it we now got to plug in the usb lead which is connected directly to the ufo 202 it's about six foot long and it's black and it's got a usb plug on it you can't miss it it's the only th it's the only thing there so plug that in make sure you get it the right way up don't force it in and we'll go from there i think the man who invented usbs was evil because he made a very useful connector and then he made it so you can't tell which way up it is without fiddling and it always i always get it wrong the first time anyway got it in this time and that's where we're going to go from there it's nice quick plug it in and maybe it will come up with them there or maybe not so i think it's re registered it so we'll go and have a look and this is how you do the setting up you go onto the audio settings so on windows which is the only one I really know. It's down there. So that's bottom right of the screen. Click on the little speaker icon, but use the right mouse button, and then you'll get the proper thing come up, which is, like I say, click on there. Use the right click. Then you open sound settings, which is the top one. And then if we can see on the screen, I'll show you how to do it. Now you can see there it says microphone USB audio codec. It says speakers USB audio codec. We're not worried about speakers at this point, but we'll leave it, we'll put them onto that. But we'll have a look down at the microphone USB audio codec. Now this says under the heading of input. So that's fine, because that's where you want it to be. We are selecting what we've plugged in. As far as, this is where the instructions are a little bit misleading. It says it will be automatically detected. And it is. It's detected as a mono microphone. And I think it's uh, it's not a very high bitrate either. So if you just plug it in, it will work. You will get signal. But it, it's not going to be a stereo. And it's not going to be particularly high quality. Better than nothing, but not very good. 
So having clicked on there, we go in, we're now into the device properties. We then want to go over and label it up as to what it is. Now it just says microphone. It's not a microphone. It is the UFO. So I'm just going to type in there something that actually distinguishes it from everything else. And uh, I'm having a bit of a problem here typing, but you know, you got to do what you got to do. I think I'll come in with you, UFO. But that's all right, because it's the only one I've got. So if you don't click on rename, it will not remember to, that you've renamed it. It will drop out when you come out of that section. So do click on the on the button there, clicked on rename. Having done that, you then go over to advanced audio properties, click on there, and that little box comes up. Now that box is the important one. Now you see it already says in there, UFO or UUFO. I'm going to change the icon because I don't want it to look like a microphone. And the only thing I can think of on here is that little box, the one second one in on the top line. So I'm going to click on there eventually. Boom, click. There we go. And that then means I can click on OK. And it'll show that picture when I'm looking at things. We'll click on down the bottom here just to make sure everything's okay and and continue on by going up and looking at some of these tabs now you got here you've got various tabs the one you got here is levels it's on 54 percent that's about right and we click on advanced this is the important one you can see there it says one channel 16 bit 4800 hertz or something like that DVD quality, which means high quality mono. If you can have high quality mono, which of course you can, but we don't want mono, we want it to be in stereo. So let's get rid of the recipes of the day. This is the trouble with using a internet connected device for this sort of thing. So there we go, we've got all the different options there, all the different qualities. Now I'm going for DVD quality because I want the best that I can get. And, and I'm going to click on apply. It's then saying this device is in use and do you want to continue? The answer is yes because it shouldn't be in use. It just thinks it is. So we just click on yes. We want to continue and hey presto, we now have the thing set up. All we've got to do is click on OK on this window. So click on OK on this window. Come on Gary, click on, click on OK. Oh, what, what, what do you want? Yeah, that's it, better, thank you. And then we could do a test, but I haven't got anything connected to it as such. So we won't worry about that bit at this point, but you could do if you wanted to. And then it says there that I've got to re renew me my uh, various subscriptions. So again, internet connected. So that's okay there. Click on device properties, uh, settings, click on there, boom. Now it says there sound, speakers is USB audio. And it says input is SFO, USB audio codec, which is what we wanted. That means that that has taken that as being the input from whatever you want to plug into it. Now all we've got to do is connect it up to something and test it. Well, I'm just going to test it without connecting it up initially. And the reason I'm going to do that is because I can. Because I know what I'm looking for. And you can, look, you can know as well now because I'm going to tell you. What we're going to do is close that down. Close, boom, gone, no. Come on, gone. Click on it, click on, click on it. No. I don't know, you just can't get the staff. Anyway, so that's that. Now, if I click on Audacity, which is there, diggity boom, click on, click. Oh, it is, it is, see the little thing was moving there. All right, so we've got Audacity started up now. And we're going to have a look and it says USB, UFO and stereo recording, so two channels, and it's got speakers, USB audio codec. So we click on record and it's bringing up two inputs, but nothing else because we haven't got any audio connected. So the next thing to do is to connect the audio to the UFO. So enter my Series 70 AOA turntable. You've seen this in previous videos. So this one has been modified so that it's feeding straight out of the cartridge. There is no preamplifier in it. 
I've removed the original preamplifier, which was a bit naff. So that's the way it is now. And that's why it's got three leads, got two RCAs, and one other lead, which has got a tag on it, which is for, it has to be red, but that's because that's what I had. It happens to be the ground lead, which is very important. On this one, the connector for the earth was very, very tight, and I had to get some pliers onto it. But uh, having loosened it, it was now fine. And so you have to put the ground wire if you're using the straight out. And this is because it's a very small signal, thousandths of a volt rather than volts. So it's important that you get the earth with it to stop it picking up the hum. So having done that, you then plug the phonos into the input. When I say phonos, this is because I'm British and we used to call their phono plugs. They are now mostly referred to as RCAs. So if, I, if you hear me say that, that's what it is, and that's why. But uh, I will try and get it right as far as everybody else is concerned to call them RCAs in the future. They are colour coded and so red in the red and white in the white. As long as you stick to the same convention, it doesn't matter whether the unit itself is wired correctly because it will always be correct. So I'm going to play sound power on RCA Victor, Dynagroove, but I don't know whether if you hear it, it's going to be, it might be muted, it depends on copyright, so we'll have to see where we go. Before we start it, just got to make sure that that switch, remember that switch next to the earth terminal, that has to be switched to either line level or phono input, so we need it on phono, not line. Having connected everything, now we get the audacity, and we hit the record button, like that. And now all we've got to do when it's running is go over to the record deck and drop the needle, uh, figuratively, nice and gently, on the record, get it up and running. This turntable is running using the Audio-Technica 3600, so it's a nice cartridge, albeit on a relatively budget deck. Cheap nasty, some people say. But nevertheless, it turns the record and it's got a good pickup. So, what more do you want? So, that's now doing the job. A little bit of dust on there, never mind. We've got this thing is running and the music is being recorded. Or it will be. You just see it drop there. And there we go. There is the needle drop and there's the music coming out. And you can see on here that it appears to be mono initially and then you can see that it's stereo because you've got sound on one channel and not the other they don't match because this is a bit of a demo record then it's doing some rather good stuff i will you should be hearing the direct feed at this point but if you're not it's because of copyright the unit has a headphone socket on it so i'm going to use these normal audio technica headphones and take the quarter inch adapter off so that i've just got a 3.5 millimeter jack and I'm going to plug that into the base of the UFO. There's a couple of important bits that the instructions don't tell you. First of all, they do say you can feed the output on the output RCAs to speakers, by which they mean powered speakers, not just normal speakers. And if you do that, then you will get good quality results. And therefore, you, you can use this as a preamplifier for your phono, which is great. Before the final roundup, if I can just say if you've got any value from this video, please like and subscribe. I'd love to hear any experiences you've had with this sort of thing. Put it in the comments. And back to the story. And or you can use headphones in the headphone jack and listen to your records, which is even greater or better, whatever word, whatever words you want to use. But there's there's one weird anomaly. The UFO is powered by the USB socket on your computer and if you just try and power it from a USB power supply it won't work it has to be connected to a computer in order for it to work and when it is working you can use it as a preamp and you can monitor it and everything that's great but if you don't plug it into a computer or similar USB device you can't just power it off a power unit it won't work which is strange anyway that's the way it is nothing we can do about that but as a product, it's great. You've heard the sounds, hopefully, and you know what it's like. So I would give this one certainly 9 out of 10. It's um, better than I thought and a little bit trickier than it could be. But, you know, at the end of the day, it's not a lot of money in actual fact. 
and it does a very, very good job. Thanks for watching, and up here you'll find another interesting video to have a look at.